Hello there. Hi, everybody. It's been a while. Welcome to a fresh episode of Mind Body Medicine with Dr. Ariel. That's me. You can catch me every first and third Monday and Thursday at 6 p.m. right here on Promise Resource Network. Um, I wanted to start by basically apologizing for missing just about the entire month of October um, and sticking you guys with replays, but I do have a pretty good reason, I like to think. It falls under the major life event category. Um, I got married uh, to a pretty uh, amazing guy, but really my friends uh, refer to him as the unicorn because he is pretty perfect. And we went on our honeymoon. Uh, to the beautiful Dominican Republic. I don't know if you've ever been, but it's a country that's very near and dear to my heart um, because I lived there during two separate summers um, working in a rural healthcare clinic back in my doctoring days. Um, working, though, during that time, of course, kept me very busy. So I thought, hey, why don't I return back as a tourist this time, um, see some old friends, and it did not disappoint. Um, Everything from pina coladas to dolphin rides and shark swims and just making new friends, meeting different people for the first time, right? Because it's our first travel since COVID and for me even longer than that. Um, and so, yeah, we rode dolphins, we swam with sharks, we made uh, friends and just relaxing it was like the number one agenda and being all inclusive, that was all we did. Just everything was right there. So it was great. Just what the doctor ordered. See what I did there? Um, but towards the end, um, and this is why I had to postpone the, the subsequent PRN talks, um, it got a little dicey. I got a gnarly sinus infection. Hi, Nyla, cat. <laughs> um, sinus infection, and then like flight after flight after flight just kept getting canceled or rescheduled and all kinds of craziness. But we finally returned home. Um, a couple weeks ago to our fur babies with a renewed appreciation for our home and for potable water. <laughs> um, so speaking of the Dominican, we can start out with our Spanish words of the day. Um, let's see. All right. So today we're going to be talking about sort of energy and in, in particular energy in the context of movement and yoga. Um, I think that's the easiest way to kind of conceptualize it as well when you bring movement into the concept and the idea. So um, obviously energy is kind of an easy cognate. It looks like what it means uh, in English and Spanish, um, energy and energia. Um, so I wanted to add another one and that would be um, impulso, which is like momentum. So I figured your momentum and your energy kind of go hand in hand. So impulso and energia. And hi to any of my Spanish speakers if you guys are around. I know the time difference is can be significant. Um, but yeah, let me for once not leave this up the whole time. I'll actually put it to the topic. Um, but I'll open with a quote. Um, Everything is energy, right? It starts with your thoughts. It becomes amplified by your emotions. And then based on your actions, you increase its momentum. So kind of tying everything together before we start here. But anyway, I did miss you all very, very, very much. Seriously, this is like the best part of my entire week when I get to, you know, come on here. Um, I'd love to hear how everybody's been doing. If you want to say hi, drop a comment in the chat. Um, I, for one, have been doing swimmingly since getting over the Dominican bugs. Yes, there were multiple. <laughs> Wasn't pretty. Um, but different, different little fun things have been happening. I happen to luck out at the local thrift store. Um, it's run by a nonprofit and I kind of stumbled upon their Christmas sale like the very first day that it started. So I I made my husband basically drop me like when the doors open. So I'm like lugging around these three baskets full of stuff for like an hour through the store. I mean, it was a genuine workout and you're like rifling through all of the things. Um, but it was, it was definitely very exciting and got me right into the Christmas spirit. And luckily everyone was really nice. I was, I was legit a little afraid because there was like a line out the door from even like getting in and the register and it was a madhouse, but people were actually really nice and nobody jacked my basket. So it was great. Um, but yeah, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Um, I feel like everyone this year is kind of 
decorating early or getting into whatever celebratory things a little more, right? Because we're just so slowly emerging towards the end of the pandemic. But yeah, I'm with you. If you want to go all out like I did early, we don't have our tree yet, but we're going um, this weekend actually to see our Boone family. Um, we always go to a Christmas tree farm and um, yeah, we'll we'll see what we can find. But now our home is very merry, bright and cozy. Um, and I mean, very, like I bought so much stuff, but it was only like a hundred dollars, but still the lady at the, at the thrift store. And this is for the entire house, by the way. I didn't just, yeah. But anyway, the woman's like, you need to tell your husband to come bring a truck when he comes back. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding? Cause I mean, he, we might actually not fit this in our little Hyundai compact car, but yes. Um, let's see. That's pretty much the only update for me. Oh, except for these awesome pajamas, which I of course wanted to mention that yes, I'm wearing pajamas because I'm tired y'all and cold and these are flannel and comfy and these are our matching family pajamas. So I made Adam get the same pair. And then Bailey has a cute little sweater, our dog. And there are two bandanas, too, that the cats, I'm going to try to put on them. I mean, all I need is, like, five seconds, right? Just get a quick little, like, snap of the picture. But we'll see how that goes. Might be, like, <laughs> I'm going to feel like I'm mistreating them or something. I don't know. But anyway, um, what else? Oh, a bunch of new plants. That's my other newest endeavor is real plants, I like to say, because I've been really good at managing succulents. I have a bomb succulent garden, um, but I've never done really like an actual plant. I don't even know how it works, how often to water them, and they're all apparently a little different, but we'll see how long those last as well. Um, anyway, back on topic. Sorry I ramble when, I, when I'm like catching up with people, even though I'm just sort of talking into the internet abyss. I'll check the comments quick. Hi, Rebecca. Hey, Adam. Yes, it has been way too long. I've missed it myself. It keeps me like really focused and is honestly good for my well-being. I have my little post PRN dance that I do every time. You can ask Adam. <laughs> Hello. Yes, it's very nice. <laughs> All right. So jumping right in. Um, I'm choosing today's topic basically because it's something totally new to me. Um, it, it's new, well, I should say it's new in practice, even though I've been very acutely aware of the concept of energy my entire life. I consider myself an extremely like intuitive, perceptive person. Like I, I have never met someone and gotten a bad energy that I later like changed my opinion. Like if, if somebody's got, as my med school roommate would say, that boy's got bad juju. <laughs> and so once I started actually listening to my own gut instincts, I was like, their energy is just their vibrations are just not in alignment and I tend to be right. So this is a kind of a valuable life skill as well, in my opinion. Um, and I consider myself a lifelong learner. So part of learning is then becoming the teacher, right? Like in medicine, we say, what is it? <laughs> I can barely remember the quotes, see one, do one, teach one. So that's what we do for like surgeries or, or medical procedures, right? So teaching is the ultimate uh, act of understanding and, and sharing, right? It's, it's helpful to raise the energy of the human collective, right? So um, basically, yeah, so back to being a lifelong learner, if I'm not studying something, I've realized I'm in some sort of a rut. If I'm not at least like, even if it's just fashion, which I consider like online shopping studying because I don't buy it, although my husband would disagree. He'd be like, you do buy it. <laughs> I, I, there's a lot in my cart that I that I did delete later. Um, but anyway, learning about different things, exploring different things. Sometimes I'll just research traveling. Um, but this time I enrolled in an energy yoga course. or It's a seminar. It's a seven-part series. Once a month we meet, and we just had our first class um, not yesterday, but that past Sunday. Um, and it was just incredible. So um, I'm, and the best part, oh yeah, I wanted to share about this experience is one, it's Zoom, it's virtual, which ordinarily I would not prefer, but it is with um, Nicole, who owns In Balance Yoga, which is in Blacksburg. I went to Virginia Tech for med school. And that studio is where I fell in love with yoga and where I've learned the power of mindfulness and creating your own reality. Like I say it all the time that that studio in particular and yoga was 
my saving grace, you know, that's how I kept my sanity and, and survived. Um, so it's really special to kind of come full circle and like after being not only becoming the doctor that they knew I was becoming, but then totally doing a 180, right, to working in nonprofits and similar endeavors that they do themselves. So it's been very cool to reconnect all around. Um, so I will start by kind of breaking down the basic principles of energy yoga. Um, and it's more like movement. You're not well, there are certain poses affiliated that you can use to kind of augment or amplify the effects. But in general, it involves like tapping and just different kinds of, of movements, um, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, then we'll wrap up with sort of a quick two minute wake up routine to kind of get your your energy, your chi, your chakras flowing um, that really anyone can pretty much do if you're physically able. Um, and then just to start out with housekeeping, I would not bother trying to take notes because I was furiously doing it myself um, during the seminar. Um, unless you're going to be a nerd like me and just go back and replay and pause. That's totally cool, too. I, I definitely encourage that because there's some good good nuggets in here. Um, and I can also send you like more organized stuff later if you want to inbox me that I've typed out for you. Um, but yeah, really just a taste here. Um, I'm just now getting my own feet wet, but it is so stinking cool. So I thought I would share that today. If this resonates, um, yeah, we can certainly continue to build upon it. And then it will, I'll continue my training and share it as, as you guys like. Um, and likewise, if you don't like it, you can tell me and we can do something else. Hey, Alan, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad to see you back and be back here. No more sickness, no more travel, just quiet, peaceful holidays. <laughs> so first things first, what do we mean by energy? It's a really hard concept and yet a really simple concept, right? Everything has energy. Um, but a good comparison that my teacher, Nicole, was sort of using an analogy would be in the same way our arteries pump blood throughout our bodies, we have these things called meridians that are kind of energetic lines. Um, and then we have certain still points, just kind of like a little nodule almost, like a tight muscle. Um, there are still points along these energetic meridians that correspond to different parts of the body. And as an osteopathic physician or a DO, this there is a lot of correlation between what we learn and, and the principles that they're touching on in this yogic practice. We tend to, to use uh, areas of the spine more directly in terms of inner innervations, like your thoracic vertebrae, um, Let's see, I'm not even gonna try to like say the numbers because one of my doctor friends is gonna call me out, but there are certain vertebrae that correspond to each organ system, right? So maybe your small intestine or your large intestine and simply by rubbing those areas of the spine and releasing that tension, you can help those organs to heal themselves. So I'm, I'm here to say that medically there is a lot to be said for this energy yoga. Um, so I'm excited to share it. Um, and it's a little bit, akin to acupuncture, like acupuncture is based on meridians and targeting certain still points. Um, you might have also heard reflexology, like a massage technique. Um, there are different areas even on the feet that correspond to the entire body. If you if you ascribe to Ayurvedic medicine, which I ascribe to all types of medicine, right? That's what makes me a different kind of doctor. And I think better in the holistic sense, I should, I'll say. Um, but yeah, it's just addif additional sort of components of this ancient Chinese medicine form of healing, really. Um, and just to give a few examples, so it makes more sense. So in osteopathy, I mentioned the spine, right? But to use our lower extremities as a more specific example, um, there's a still point at the center of the ball of your foot. Ball of your foot is when you stand up on your toes, it's that meaty portion right at the base of your toes. So right in the middle of that, that's your kidney. So if you have kidney stones, that area might be really hypersensitive. But if you let someone stick a needle in it, like acupuncture, not like jabbing it with a needle, that's that would be poor form. We try not to hurt you guys deliberately. Um, but you could release that energetic block, right? That energetic still point that needs to be free flowing again. Um, and then you can look at the entire inside of your foot, sort of the arch, you know, in the in the middle aspect of either foot, 
all along that inner side there corresponds to different areas of your spine. Um, how many of us have had pain along there, right? That's that's what acts up a lot with plantar fasciitis. Um, and then we have our Achilles tendon, which is on our heels. Um, I should have worn probably something better than these giant slippers. But this is your Achilles tendon right here. Um, <laughs> and that corresponds to your parasympathetic nervous system. So remember, we have the sympathetic, the fight or flight. And the parasympathetic, which is rest and digest and healing of the body only occurs in a parasympathetic state. When you're sympathetic state, you're focused on survival mode, right? Your blood needs to be pumping, your cortisol is going, your stress is maxed out, and you're ready to fight, fight or freeze or fawn now. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. Um, and then if you go one hand's width up from the Achilles tendon. So it's about midway up your calf. Um, that actually corresponds to your spleen, liver, and your kidneys. So this is one of the most powerful points in the entire body. And I actually just had acupuncture done myself. Thanks, Dr. Eggleston. <laughs> You're the best. Um, and he he was on that exact point and i didn't make the connection until actually just now <laughs> that that's the point he was on when he said like this is the single most important point in the entire female body um and i was like wow that it really is powerful and it it makes sense it's corresponding to so many vital organs that keep our body healthy um yeah, so all of this energy, right? Energy is comprised of like your thoughts, your words, your actions, your emotions. And then of course, this creates your aura. I don't know if you've heard of some people who like read auras, um, but it, it sometimes involves just sensing things. Sometimes people see colors, sometimes there's temperature changes, but um, have you ever seen somebody that just looks like they're glowing? I mean, pregnant people do all the time, um, but... <laughs> Someone, there are certain people, very, very few that I've met in my life, but a, a handful of people that I've seen that really, truly do almost have like a halo. Um, these people just are vibrant and glow and just radiate love and, and, and good energy and peace. Like you're, you are truly magnetically drawn to these people. I'm sure you all can think of a very charming, charismatic friend that you have that just everyone seems to love. Um, They've just got good energy. They've got good vibes and your vibe attracts your tribe. Um, so yeah, your, your aura is like your ozone layer. That's how Nicole referred to it. It is basically a filter of our hearts, of our minds. But most importantly, it's a reflection of the energy that we're putting out into the world. Um, and so this energy yoga is based on traditional Eastern Chinese medicine, which ironically, like I said, is, is a little distinct from Ayurvedic medicine, which is the sister science of yoga, right? Like I was very surprised when, when she said that, because I'm thinking, well, that makes no sense. They're, they're almost inextricably related, right? Yoga and Ayurveda, that they go hand in hand. Um, but no, Chinese Eastern medicine has so much overlap, but just a little bit that's distinct. And that's why I think complementary and alternative medicine is so powerful, right? You see the things that do overlap in every single alternate modality. And you're like, okay, this is real. I don't care what Western medicine says. I mean, there are plenty of people who are like, where did you hear that? And, and Europe discovered it 20 years ago. Don't even get me started on that. Um, anyway, back to the topic. <clears throat> there are considered to be five classes of energy. And I'll, I'll go into these just a little bit more later, like truly just a taste, don't worry. Um, but those five elements or classes of energy are water, wood, fire, earth, and metal of all things. The last one really surprised me because I'm like, I can see how like, you know, we've got obviously water pumping throughout our body. That's most of what we're made of. We're basically just cucumbers with anxiety. <laughs> I saw that in a meme and it cracks me up every time. Um, but these these elements are, are just different components of us, right? I was thinking, okay, fire makes sense. It's when you're maybe when you are sprinting in athletics or maybe when you're feeling super angry 
or maybe when your bowels are super angry and you got that digestive fire going on earth right okay that's our flesh and bones but metal stick with me <laughs> um so going back to just the fundamentals before i go into the specific elements um again we're doing ancient chinese traditional medicine um and energy yoga basically so these fundamental principles are that en number one energy wants to move right an object in motion wants to stay in motion Le newton's law of thermodynamics energy wants to move energy wants to move in patterns particularly in a figure eight fashion it likes to crisscross so for me i like to think of it as the infinity symbol because i'm like energy forever I don't know. And maybe it's because the infinity symbol is tattooed in part of my back, but who knows? Um, and then the theory behind this energetic movement or ability thereof is that your energy can become stuck. And I know that we have all felt a degree of that stuckness, right? Whether it's mentally, physically, emotionally, we just, we get in a rut. It's, it's just how it happens and it's completely normal. But when it gets stuck, disease forms. Um, and there are a lot of theories of, of disease, particularly cancer surrounding this, um, Gabor Mate, his book, when the body says no, sort of further explores this premise that like when, um, when women in particular are having these deep, deep emotions that they begin to almost ignore and hold very close to their chest. It literally sort of energetically spreads into the nearest tissue and that is your breasts. Um, of course, I, I certainly can ascribe to that theory as someone who lost her mother to breast cancer, right? Like my mom was the queen of keeping it cool. Like she went through so, so, so much behind closed doors that, you know, even to this day, I'm finding out, excuse me, new things um, that my father did to her. And, and it's just, very eye-opening you know you're like wow she really did like protect us from that and shelter us from that but it led to her own you know illness in in a sense i really do believe it was stress related um so anyway back to the principles um in order to move energy requires space makes sense right if you give an object a tiny box to move in it's not going to do much kind of like the concept of putting a turtle in a larger cage and suddenly even though it's five years old it triples in size because it has the room to do so um so for energy to move we require space this is why we practice stillness during meditation it really allows our minds to sort of open and give space to this tranquility and and peace really and then energy supports your intentions right you, what you're, this is why we set an intention before yoga. Sometimes in my, in my classes, I need, I, I liken my practice to the rainfall, right? Sometimes I love a light drizzle, just a tiny bit of mist on a hot day where, you know, you're just going long, slow, deep stretch and everything's fine. And some days, particularly in like stressful med school, I was pissed. I was ready for hot power flow and I was going to do 50 chaturangas between every pose and just like gun it because I needed that like stormy rain that day. Um, and some days I didn't know what my intention was. Usually my intention would be like, let me just be present on my mat for an hour because the rest of the world is too loud right now. Um, honestly, more often than not. But with our energies, we have, that's why our thoughts are so important, right? Thoughts determine actions. Um, and this can be subconsciously or consciously occurring. And that's, I think the fascinating part, right? Is that sometimes we don't even realize the energy that, that we're carrying around with us. Um, so from here, let me just check the comments, see if I missed anything. Awesome. Rebecca, send some resources that will let you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my Facebook is Ariel Taltz. Or, oh, Ariel Taltz White. I just got married. Ooh. Um, yeah, I don't know how this links it. Let me just write my like full name if you want to just inbox me. Um, yeah, I can send you certainly some resources just to refer to it. Cause yeah, for me, I love to listen to it the first time, but then I have to really see it written down to kind of let it solidify. And thank you, Rebecca. That's very, very sweet. And oh, oh, you're reading Gabor Mate. Oh, that's awesome. 
I'd love to hear which one you're reading. I've only read um, this one of his, but I, I have several on, the, on my list. I'm bad about starting. Like I, I'm, I'm reading about 500 books right now. <laughs> so that explains it. Um, but yeah, so now we'll delve into those five elements of energy a little bit more deeply. And each of these has an accompanied sound, season, emotion, and meridian. I don't know why everybody, I almost want to like name my daughter that. That sounds really pretty. Hi, I'm Meridian. <laughs> anyway, um, let's see. I took some notes here. Okay, so you are basically going to use these sounds during like meditation or breath work to sort of direct your energy healing into that element of yourself, if that makes sense. Basically, you just want to sort of be meditative as you make the sound, and it'll make more sense in a second, I think. So element number one, water, right? So the sound for water is, it's like blowing out a candle, which I have right next to me. I'm obsessed with candles. I get these at thrift stores too. They're great. Um, anyway, so water is a And the season affiliated with water is winter, the W and the W. That's how I think of it. The emotion that is associated with water is fear. The meridians, the energetic points that correspond with your water element are your kidneys and your bladder. Makes sense, right? This is oftentimes why when we feel nervous or fearful, we feel, what, I got to go pee, oh my gosh, or maybe that's just me, but I, I think that's what it is. Um, and then for any of you yogis, or soon-to-be yogis, because I love to transform people's lives, <laughs> um, the poses associated with the element of water would be camel pose, happy baby pose, and butterfly pose. Um, so if you're feeling particularly anxious, you might make the water sound and close your eyes and focus and try to self-soothe. Just going. <sighs> it's kind of like the sound of taking a deep breath anyway, which my husband is wonderful at reminding me to do when I'm feeling anxious. Like he'll literally hug me and just be like, take a breath. And I'm like, thanks. <laughs> Um, but that's, it's kind of intuitive, right? But you, it comes to find out it's science, right? It's actually based in a real energetic theory. So water. Next is wood. So wood is the sound, kind of like you're shushing someone. And interestingly, the emotion associated with that is anger. Which I, I mean, to me, that's kind of appropriate because when someone's really mad or, or even sometimes a baby that's inconsolable and screaming and crying, what do we do? Right? So try that if you're feeling a little angry about something. The meridians for wood are your liver and your gallbladder. Um, and then again, for yogis, you've got chair pose, warriors one and three. And then eagle's pose. So wood is... Element number three is fire. Fire makes a... <sighs> sound. The season for fire is summer. Obviously makes sense. The emotion associated with it is anxiety. Doesn't that make sense with the sound? When you, when you do something you were really afraid to do or you meet a deadline and it's finally over with, what do you do? <sighs> you breathe a sigh of relief, right? You're releasing the anxiety that you had pent up. Honestly, after our wedding, that was me for like the first five days of our honeymoon, just kind of breathing because I didn't have a million people to talk to and to plan. And don't get me wrong, it was the best day of my life, but it was stressful, man. And, the, and I didn't, I don't have parents. So like I was doing it with my my husband and his lovely mother and lots of friends, but still it's a lot. So yeah. Um, but fire has the most meridians of all elements. Okay. So this is like our, I mean, makes sense inner fire, right? That's one of the most common energy sensations we feel, whether it's a fiery passion, whether it's an anger, whether it's that anxiety, um, but it, it controls your heart, 
your small intestine, so our digestion, and our entire circulatory system. So our blood going through the veins and the arteries and all of the anatomy that I try so hard to forget these days. Um, and then for the you yogis, again, the fire, the sound is ha, ah, and your poses are going to be boat pose, tree pose, fish pose, which is also the best for anti-aging, um, and dancer pose. Number four, that's earth. So earth is going to be, for you yogis, you, you'll know this as ujjayi breath. Um, but the easiest way to describe it is like you have a mirror in front of your face and you're trying to fog it up, but your mouth is closed. So I, I feel like the easiest way is like, you're still making that kind of a restriction in the back of your throat. And it's a really, really powerful grounding technique. Um, it creates kind of this hissing sound in the back of your throat. I'm not sure how well breath transmits on this. I'm sorry if it's like when you're on a phone and you like breathe into it. <laughs> I'm trying to make it sound normal. <clears throat> but, you know, so it's that tight restriction. And this is also called warrior's breath um, or victorious breath because it's really what helps calm your nervous system so that you can endure really intense yoga poses. Um, if you've ever done a yoga class, I mean, down dog used to be difficult for me. And then I learned it was a resting pose. And I was like, the heck? <laughs> it's like, I, this is not what I signed up for. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but yes, it, it it is basically a way to focus your fire, your earth, your bones, energy into just the throat instead of your body, right? You You'll be in a yoga pose and sometimes you're your dogs are barking and you are so sore and you might have a really bad cramp, any number of things. Um, but I find I really do when I, when I do that breath, I somehow can just disassociate from my body um, and, and kind of just remain in the head and remain mentally strong. Um, so this is a good, a good tool as well, I think, for anxiety. Like if I'm, or really anger, I think. If I'm really angry, I'll do that as well. Like, and again, it's kind of instinctive, right? Like I don't do it because I know it's Ujjayi breath. I, I just, my body wants to make that sound. So it doesn't say some other sounds, right? <laughs> um, I digress. So the season for earth um, is Indian summer. So it's kind of where we're at right now. Like that coolness as you're easing into fall and winter, but it's, well, it's, we're sort of past the stage where the warmth from summer is still there, but that's okay. Um. The emotions associated with earth, again, it's very grounding. Like think of mother earth, right? Like there's nothing more nurturing than a mother in theory. Trust me. I know we all can have mommy and daddy issues too, but in theory, you know, the, nobody loves you like your mama and the emotions associated then make sense that they are self-care, nurturing, compassion. And so the meridians that are going to be associated with this are the spleen and the stomach. And remember that 80% of our serotonin is not absorbed up here, which is where the pharmaceutical meds work. It's in our bellies, right? So kombucha, probiotics, keeping the gut health up is, is of utmost importance. Um, and again, it's a grounding force. So for yogis, again, those poses would be ones like triangle, head to knee pose, and pigeon pose, which truthfully is one of the most physically and mentally difficult poses in all of yoga in my opinion and this is because as humans we and especially women um carry trauma in our hips right our muscles literally have memory i don't know if you know that but i I've, I've gotten massages in a detoxing sense um it's called panchakarma i did it in india but daily massages for a week deep, deep tissue. And there were times where I spontaneously would cry and have no idea why until I like kind of flashed back to what was happening. Like she, she hit a spot in my shoulder and I started sobbing about my dog that I lost when I was 15. Muscles remember and the body remembers. So let that also be encouragement to you if you are more sedentary than you normally are or there than you would like to be, right? Um, you can definitely you know, nurture that, that ability back as well. 
Um, let's see. Oh yeah, so pigeon pose. Yeah, basically what you're doing in pigeon pose is you're stretching your hips in the deepest, deepest way using your whole body weight, which is a lot, right? Um, so opening up that tight can of worms, both physically and then emotionally, based on whatever affiliations you might have. I say women in particular because many of us give birth. Um, that's a lot of hip trauma, right? For, not only for the nine months that you're carrying, but for the birthing process and, and any other havoc that baby can wreak on you in the process, right? I'm mostly kidding. Um, but yeah, it can be really difficult to overcome mentally. And, and that's, again, why we practice. So to the final element, this is metal. And metal makes the sound like a snake. So the metal season is fall, the autumn. The emotion affiliated with metal is sadness. The meridians are your lungs and your large intestine. And for you yogis, Bridge, shoulder stand, and reclined supine twist are going to be your best friends for rebalancing your metal pose or your metal element. And I wanted to touch on metal again just because not only did it surprise me to learn that that was an element, but it surprised me to learn that that was my element that was so grossly out of whack and jacked up. I was like, okay, you're telling me that not only do I have a weird metal constitution, but that's what's messed up in me? Go figure, right? Um, but metal. So motion is sadness. I, I do struggle with depression. Um, the meridians are lungs. I have asthma. And large intestine. I have gastritis. The poses from yoga, bridge, shoulder stand, recline, supine, twist. These are three poses that are easy for me and that I've been skipping and ignoring. I'm sorry, but that's really cool to me. I was like nerding out over that for a long time. <laughs> so those are the five elements. Let me just check in and see if I'm missing anything. Gabriela, hello. I love Gabriel Mate. Yes, he is the bomb. I really need to read more of him. Scattered Minds. Ooh, that sounds awesome. I'm going to have to check that one out. I don't know if I've even heard that one. What? I'm writing it down. I get to take notes during my own podcast too. Thanks guys. Um, and then, oh yeah, and Dr. Addison, yep. And yes, I do have acupuncture people. Yeah, that's the thing. I used to work in Charlotte. Um, oh, Gabriella, I got you. Her name is Chris Ge Gregory. I will, I'll go back in the comments and I'll, I'll message you. She does like a sliding scale and everything and she's one of the smartest people I know. So yeah, even though I'm not living in Charlotte anymore, I still got you. I know natural healers of all kinds and they do not like pay me for referrals or anything. So it's legit. They're just awesome people. Um, highly recommend Scattered Minds. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to check that out. ADHD. I was going to say, I was like, that's probably either about ADHD or maybe bipolar when you get a bit manic or something, but that's fascinating. I, I absolutely have ADHD. That's part of why I have to make an outline for this podcast or else we'd be like finishing up talking about squirrels or something. <laughs> All right. So how do we incorporate energy yoga or just mindful energy? That's like a better way to say it, I think, because it's not even really yoga at all. Um, so number one, self-love. This philosophy thinks thinks, knows, asserts that ener that self-love is the energetic root of all healing. Um, so you can start by doing a wake-up routine, which I will show you a little bit, it, well, in like two minutes. <laughs> but it takes, it takes about two minutes itself, which is why it's so easy to incorporate. Um, but you can try this wake-up routine. There's another exercise that is recommended kind of on a weekly basis. And that's known as clearing the gates of the hands. Um, but apparently we carry a lot of energy in our hands and our feet, kind of the most it makes sense. It's our, it's our most distal or far away from the heart, the axis of the body. It's our most distal appendage or limb body part. Um, so we have a lot of energy in our hands, right? So this involves kind of massaging right here, which this is also an acupressure point for 
um, things like headaches. That's like the number one thing I know it's for, but uh, I also use it for anxiety. Like a lot of times if I'm about to freak out, I, I occasionally, rarely nowadays, thank God, have panic attacks. PTSD is a bitch. Um, but he, Adam will just reach for me and be like, give me your hand. He like rubs right here. But anyway, you start here, move in between the webs of every finger. And you can do this with oil as well. It's called abhyanga. This, that is an Ayurvedic technique. Again, some overlap. Um, but any kind of oil, like grapeseed oil, coconut oil, whatever. Um, and then you're going to go each finger kind of squeezing and pulling out that energy and pulling out, you know, like getting really like physically shaking it off. Right. Um, and you can do the same with your feet in between each toe, on each toe, with or without oil, however you, whatever tickles your fancy there. Um, and let's see. So I talked about gates of the hand. But yeah, so basically energy yoga is helping us to really know ourselves better and give, and it gives us specific tools that really empower us to heal our own bodies. Um, that's one of the core tenets of osteopathic medicine is that the body is innately capable of healing itself in profound and powerful ways that drugs simply cannot. Um, and that's, this is not, you know, a plug for like, all oh, drugs are bad and I don't believe in medication. No, no. <laughs> but there are definitely there there is an epidemic of over medication and that's what the point is here so learning these tools can really just empower you i think um to heal areas of your body that are kind of out of alignment or maybe they're plagued with chronic pain or some form of illness um because it really puts you in touch with your emotions right and I think of emotions as a really beautiful blessing to check whether you're living in alignment with your values, whether you're living a good life by your standards, right? And everyone has different standards of like success and good life. And that's the beauty of it, right? We define it for ourselves. Um, and so if someone or something feels energetically off or gives you that bad juju, just protect your own aura, protect your own energy, just kind of close it off. That's something that was almost impossible for me to master as a physician. I have a little too much empathy to a fault. I cried almost daily for a long time, like just with patients or in it, like utility closets, wherever I could find a place to hide out. Um, but energetically, I wasn't living in alignment with my values. I wasn't eating right. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't practicing yoga. I was living to work not working to live. And it was just a bad situation. And I made, quite frankly, what I now refer to as a brave decision, not a uh, crazy decision. I call it a nervous breakthrough, not a nervous breakdown, but I made a shift. Um, and energetically, I've never been more in alignment in my life. So clearly I made the right decision. Also COVID happened like the month after I quit. <laughs> so that was like a really powerful God wink where he was like, yeah, you got that. It's you're good. <laughs> um, anyway, let's see. Okay. I was going to say, as if that wasn't enough information, now I'm going to show you the wake up routine, but it's really, really quick. Um, and I actually really do enjoy it. I do it every morning before my Tai Chi class, which I'm going to mention a little bit later, but that is a new element of my life that has been amazing lately. Um, and yeah, it, it just makes me feel really invigorated and makes me smile and feel ready to start my day. So we're going to start with tapping. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of tapping, like emotionally tapping into your inner child, emotional freedom techniques, all these things, right? So we're going to start by tapping on thumb points. I'm not really sure what that means, but it's four spots that we tap on. Um, so eat with each one, we're going to slowly and mindfully inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth three times only. So it really doesn't take long. Um, so the first is right underneath your collarbone right here and right here. This is where your thoracic inlet it drains your lymphatic fluid, which is our immune system and wellness that we like to keep that plumb and moving. Although really we like all of our plumbing to keep moving, right? Your blood and your bowels and all that good stuff. So we tap here, we do our three breaths, and I'm not going to do them all for time's sake, but times three. And then we're going to move to our thymus. This is along your upper sternum, right in the middle of your chest. 
This is what secretes hormones through puberty and then is responsible for helping our immune boosting T cells to mature and protect our body from foreign invaders or antigens. So consider this your daily immune boost for COVID. Um, the third thumb point is alongside the bottom of your rib cage. Let me see where I am on this. You can't see it, but your ribs end right here. I think you can pretty much figure that out. Um, where you stop feeling the bones, that's where it is. You tap there again with your three breaths in and out. And this is where our spleen, our liver, all kinds of vital organs are, right? So we want to stimulate those, make them feel good. Um, and then we're going to move upward to our cheekbones. That's the last tapping point. And this is actually where our stomach meridians reside. What? This has a grounding effect. So we're doing those same three breaths in and out, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And this basically forces, also try to make your exhale longer than the inhale. That will force your parasympathetics to take over and thereby welcome in more energy. Um, let's see. So those are all the tapping ones. Then we do high knees. So like, let's see where I am on this camera. So high knees. Oh, there's a dog under me. Basically, you lift your knee and you and you tap it with your hand, right? So left and right. I'm doing the same thing on the other side. I'm bad with this camera, okay? I notice I have a lot more people tuning in now that I'm looking ridiculous. So let me sit my muscle down. <laughs> but it's high knees and you tap your knee, lift it up to your hands, right? So three bests each way. And then we're going to switch it up because energy likes to crisscross. Remember, it likes to go in figure eights, those infinity symbols. So instead of straight up and down, right hand to right leg, we're going to swap it. So cross your hands. So it's left hand to right leg and vice versa. And we're going to cross and do high knees that way. But this time we want to do it twice as long. So we'll do six breaths, which is still not that long at all. Then um, we all know about chakras, right? So you put your hands together over your root chakra and you do inhale. And you're kind of zipping up all the energy you've created. So you inhale, zip up all that energy, and then you're going to fan it out into this beautiful aura of light that you are. Maybe it's pink. Maybe it's turquoise. Maybe it's bright yellow like a halo. But inhale and zip up again. Exhale to the aura three times. And then we're going to, um, the last step is a little strange, but you zip it up. So you put two fingers in your belly button or your navel and two at your third eye, which is between your eyebrows, but just a little bit up there. So you're going to push inwards and pull upwards as we do the same. In through the nose, out through the mouth, three times again, and you've locked it in and you are good to go. And I know it took a while because I was explaining it. Actually, it only took like three minutes. Um, so yeah, doing it takes even less time. And once... Once you get the hang of it, it's like old hat, but it feels so cool. You're just like, wow, I did two minutes of energy work today and I feel great. But it's like two minutes of meditation, right? It shows that there are benefits from that. So why wouldn't there be benefits from activating your energetic centers, I should say. Um, let's see. Yep, I finished. Okay, I got it right. Lock in the energy. All right. And then in the end, I, I made a note, shake it out. Again, like your hands and feet hold a lot of energy. And so kind of a, a tailor sort of shake it off, funny dance move, um, being playful, silly with yourself. Um, but yeah, thanks for bearing with me on that. I hope you learned a thing or two. Um, but I want to challenge you to try the wake-up routine at least once. See the way that it boosts your, your mood, your energy level for the entire day in like a minute and a half. It's definitely worth it. And I can literally send you a copy of that too, um, or even like a video of me doing it or something, if you want to just have to reference to later on. Um, but, excuse me, as we're wrapping up here, I wanted to mention too that in addition to this new energy yoga monthly course that I've been taking, um, I have been also introduced to like the most beautiful tribe of women who I now do Tai Chi with every morning, and it's every single day of the week from 9 to 9 30 and that is just how I start my day now um it's only been gosh I want to say like a week and a half one of my one of my old patients actually introduced it to me a patient who's become you know like family uh friend and it's honestly the best part of my day it boosts my energy in a way I really can't explain 
Um, it's also really nice being one of like the younger participants in class because it's like oldies and classic music and, and like small talk is just joyous. Like there's none of that like, you know, gossip or anything. People are just so happy and sweet. And of course, wise, right? Like I love listening to, you know, our elders it, um, who are who are taking the class with me. It's awesome. Um, and of course, having lost my mom, like it's it's nice having that age group. That's how Susan and I got close. She's like my little adopted mama. Um, but yeah, it's it's a learning experience for me as well. Like Tai Chi, I've never done in my life. I've heard of it. I've like seen what I think is Tai Chi, like where you're like in a park and you see this like group of of people doing like strange kung fu stuff really slowly. I'm like, that's probably what Tai Chi is. But I've honestly never tried it. And it's kind of surprising because I'm such a yogi, but like Tai Chi was never really like on my radar. But now that I started it, I'm just like it's awesome. It's amazing. Um, and I, I don't really know any of the moves. So it's also humbling, right? Like yoga, I know all the poses. I'm a teacher. I got this. But Tai Chi, I'm just like, mm -mm -mm. like, I think one time I was doing the Macarena because I was like, I don't know this move, but like, I'm, I just need to like mindfully move my body. <laughs> and this is what I got. Okay. This is what I got, Tai Chi universe. Um, but it's fun and it's playful and you don't take yourself too seriously. I haven't gotten the guts to turn my camera on yet, but one of these days I will. I mostly just don't want to be a distraction. Um, but yeah, you you definitely, it, it's been like an awesome new experience for me. And the fact that it's every day, um, I think I've missed a couple times, one of which I was traveling, the other of which I, I like woke up at 930 when it was over and I was real sad. But Otherwise, um, yeah, it's been awesome. So just like finding passions like that that you can either reignite or or new hobbies that you can look into. You know, it's it's about refilling your energetic fuel tank, right? Your gas tank. Um, and as you know, I like to do I like to talk about a healing device, which let me just check in quick. Oh, I love this. I'm gonna have to go back and read more of this. I love seeing you guys you guys engage with each other. Oh my gosh, it's Karen, my teacher. She's the one who teaches Tai Chi. She leads our little tribe. Yeah, oh, man, I love this one. <laughs> oh, anyone can join the Tai Chi class. What an amazing offering. Yeah, I was I was going to ask you, Karen. I was like, can I, like, mention it on, on another episode? But I didn't know, like, how if you want to keep it a little intimate tribe. But, yes, it's she's an incredible teacher who is just, like, a light bringer. Like, I can't even describe it. That's how Susan described her to me. And then the very first class, pretty much one sentence out of Karen's mouth. And I was like, oh yeah, I see it. <laughs> so it's been amazing, amazing. And it's an awesome, um, it's an awesome way to just like start your day, you know? And, and I'm so grateful for Karen and thanks for tuning in. Um, so, okay. I will wrap up with my healing device, but this time, oh no, I think, I think Adam might not be in the room. I was going to say it's my healing device is going to be paper. Um, and I was going to show you just give me one second. I'll show you. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Whew. Sorry, I didn't. I kind of prepared. But as you can see, I'm wearing pajamas. So I'm like not fully prepared. But paper is what I'm grateful for this week, and it is my healing device, whether it is a custom watercolor journal. Shameless plug for Cullen Libby watercolors. This is my first gratitude journal, totally full. My second one, um, and it's so pretty, like I have to write in it every day. And so that's really what I needed was that motivation of like, hey, someone put in well, also someone I love. She's like my angel sister, but I'm like, Colin made this. Okay. And you better use it. <laughs> um, but paper. And so not only do I write things I'm grateful for, or just highlights of the day, but I've started getting back into poetry, writing and reading. Um, so one of my Christmas presents, which thank you, Adam, for uh, letting me show and tell this early, but it's a collection of poems by a friend of mine named Tara Eschenroder called Collecting Feathers and another one called Landing Home. And of course, Om like yoga. And um, basically 
I took a poetry writing class in college. It is literally my favorite class I've ever taken, despite being pre-med and a neuroscience and Spanish double major. Poetry writing was the best <laughs> that I took. Um, it just enabled me to express myself in a really safe way. Um, and I love words and I, I would love to write a book, but I don't have the attention span. We mentioned ADHD earlier, um, but poems I can do, you know, I could, I can sit down and sometimes I'll wake up in the middle of the night with a whole poem written in my mind. And sometimes I'll write the same poem for an entire year, but it's therapy. And so I just wanted to wrap up by sharing a little poem about energy. And Tara is awesome. By the way, her words are way better than anything I've written, but they inspire me to keep trying. And this poem is called Alta. Don't worry, it's not very long. Um, Alta, I haven't, I, I tried to research what the meaning of Alta is, if it's like the name of a goddess or something. I didn't figure it out yet, but it's the first page that I open to and energy is in the first line. So I felt like maybe the universe wanted me to share it with you. Alta, once again, the energy that is so often shared across time and space has come together, living and breathing, sharing the same air. I begin to open. The conversation flows from lips, from eyes, from hearts, from souls, from the marrow of our bones. My wings emerge. Vibrations and powerful strength shared from simply brushing skin, drinking each other in through millions of tiny, expansive pores. All encompassing, I expand. Pausing every once in a while, having the inability to do anything but smile in disbelief. You're here, embraced in Alta. We are timeless. We are limitless. We are infinite. So let me encourage you to reignite your passions or your old loves, whether it's reading or writing or poetry or music. I'm actually going to try to get a, either a piano or a guitar or both depending, but like I'm, I'm really looking for both to be like free 50, <laughs> but I would love to start trying to play my terrible music and sing out of tune just because it's something I love to do. and. Uh, so yeah, that's my encouragement for you this week. Try the wake up routine or at least get you some paper and write something down or draw a picture or whatever serves you. Um, but yeah, that's, that's sort of all I've got for you today. Let me just, yeah, I was going to say, I want to check in. Yeah, we have a lot of things to talk about. I don't even think, I'm so excited. There's so many comments. I like can't even respond right now, but I will as soon as this goes live and I have a chance to go back. But thank you all so much for tuning in. I love you. Again, best part of my week. And thanks for tuning in with me. And I look forward to talking more. And I will be back on Thursday at 6 p.m. with a whole new topic. Still in the realm of mind-body medicine, but you know what I mean. Have a beautiful night. Take care. Be well. Bye, guys.